Welcome back. WSAV is committed to honoring black history, especially the contributions made locally. Carver State Bank has been a part of this community since 1927 and is by far the oldest commercial bank headquartered in the Savannah area. For more than half of its existence, the same man has been at the helm, Robert James. As WSAV celebrates black history, we take a look at his remarkable journey. There hasn't been a time in Robert James' life that he doesn't remember being president. I was president of the, of the sophomore class. I was president of the junior class. I was um, uh, active in the Omega Psi Phi fraternity and became the boss for during my junior year. For the past 50 years, he's been at the helm of Carver State Bank, one of the oldest black-owned financial institutions in the country. He's also the longest tenured banking president in the nation. I was 24 years old when I became president. I just had a birthday, so I was actually 25 years when I, on December 1, 1971, 50 years ago. I had no idea that I would stay in Savannah this long. Today, he sits at the same desk he's had for the past half century. His office surrounded by pictures of family. This is her husband. This is Alfio. He's Italian. To say he started from modest beginnings would be an understatement. We were very poor, uh, but, but we didn't really know it, <laughs> you know, see, uh, as children, because we were busy all the time. We had plenty of food. We, uh, I found out when I got to college that, um, that we grew up uh, under the poverty level. Born and raised in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, James earned a scholarship to Atlanta's Morris Brown College, where he not only excelled academically, but he participated in several extracurricular activities. If you look at my 1967-68 yearbook from college, uh, I'm on almost every uh, organization picture because I even joined the, um, the French club. Uh, <laughs> you know, did not speak much French. During his freshman and sophomore year, he even played in the marching band. And by his senior year, he joined the baseball team. Two or three positions I played. Uh, I was a backup catcher. I played uh, uh, shortstop and I played left field. But perhaps his most memorable college experience, he says, happened the first week of his freshman year when he met his future wife, a Spelman student, Shirley. We dated for four years in college and, and got married after college. Later, James became one of the first black students to enter Harvard's business school. But I had majored in accounting and minored in business administration and had a minor in economics also. Uh, so it, uh, so I started getting intrigued about a uh, business career, and so I started looking at graduate schools of business administration. At that time, I didn't know, I didn't have the slightest idea how difficult it is to get into the Harvard Business School. Um, I'd gotten into every other school I'd applied for. Hard work has never been a stranger to James. After graduating from Harvard, he started his career in banking at CNS and landed in Savannah after being drawn to Carver State. I was so fascinated by the, the idea that that was a bank that was owned by black people. So I was working in Atlanta when the, uh, uh, Mr. Perry decided to retire. And so this little bank in Savannah that I tried to get a job with was looking for a president. I actually wrote a, a, a five-year plan as to what I was going to be doing five years out of the business school. and. For, and and, uh, and I updated it when I took this job in Savannah to say what I was going to be doing five years down the road. And, and nowhere in that plan did it have that I was going to be still in the same job 50 years. Uh, life just takes over. When he started, Carver State had $4 million in capital. It's now $60 million. And through a recent investment by J.P. Morgan Chase, James estimates it will grow to close to $200 million over the next few years. We're expecting to be a much bigger bank uh, in the near future. James says he's maintained his success by keeping a close connection to the community. In the 1970s, he ventured into the newspaper business when he bought the Savannah Tribune, the oldest black weekly publication in the country. He sat on several boards, headed numerous projects, and earned an abundance of accolades. He's even listed in the History Makers, the nation's largest African-American video archive housed in the Library of Congress. His service keeps him grounded, his mission to help everyone gain financial freedom. At 75, James has no plans of slowing down. His advice to others, do what you love, work hard to be the best, and always follow your dreams. One of the um, uh, joys of life is that is doing things that, that benefit someone other than yourself. 
As for the future of Carver State Bank, Mr. James says there's a management plan in place. His son, who is a Harvard-educated lawyer, will take over the position when he retires. Make sure you tune in to our Black History Journey special where we reflect on the past and look ahead to the future. You'll hear more stories of African-American contributions across the coastal empire and low country February 26th at 7.30 p.m. right here on WSAV.